So in today's video, I want to briefly talk to you about a new book. It's called Legendary Ireland by Ethna Massey, uh, which takes a journey around 28 different uh, historical and sacred sites of Ireland. Talks about the sites and then introduces you to some other mythology. So very nice little book. Before I do that, I have to model uh, this uh, T-shirt, which is the Tara Green Heart of Ireland T-shirt. Uh, with the beautiful logo, I'll tell you who that was designed by in a second, and it's all to promote the Tara Screen Preservation Group and their strategy for the preservation of the Tara Screen Valley. Of course, their website is tspg.org, Tara Screen Preservation Group. The uh, the logo was designed by, I hope I get this right, Noel no, Noelia de las Morenas Diaz. Now, I presume that's a Spanish name, and my pronunciation is probably terrible, and with the assistance of Robbie Bray. So, I'm sporting this, and I may appear in a couple of videos, and uh, may also take a photograph of myself. This is not the the uh, uh, the most muscular body upon which to be modelling such things. But anyway, there you go. There's a plug for the Tara Screen Preservation Group, and their efforts to continue to have the... Uh, historical integrity of the Tara screen landscape preserved um, following the construction of the M3 motorway through that valley, something that was opposed by a great many people and academics and all sorts of people from around the world, uh, myself included, but however they went ahead with it and needless to say just around the time that the M3 motorway was officially opened the economy of Ireland collapsed. So there you go, there's a lesson. You were warned not to touch the Tara Screen Valley, and you did. So there you go. Anyway, this lovely book, I'll read you. I'll, I'll read what it says about it on the back cover. Uh, Legendary Ireland recounts mythological tales associated with 28 atmospheric sites around the country, including Tara, Newgrange, the Giant's Causeway, the Beara Peninsula, Rathcrohan, Hoth Head, and the Green Awn of Alyuk. Illustrated with haunting photographs, timeless engravings, and line drawings. This gorgeous volume celebrates the marriage of Celtic myth and the breathtaking landscape of Ireland. So as I said, what seems to happen is that there's an introduction to the area and then uh, a discussion or a, a retelling of a myth associated with that area. So needless to say, I'm going to talk about my, my area, which is Newgrange and the Boyne Valley. But before I do that, there's a beautiful little quote, which I presume these are the words of... Ethna Massey herself, the author. Um, now, if I'm mistaken about that, I apologise. It doesn't attribute. It doesn't appear. There doesn't appear to be an attribution for the quote. But this is lovely. The hunger that we feel at the loss of contact with the natural world and its ancient stories is not a physical one, but a kind of spiritual and emotional starvation. Yet, feeding this hunger may involve nothing more difficult than walking out into the landscape and looking at it with the eye of the imagination. The power of the human capacity to imagine, to see beyond, reaches us through century after century and draws us again and again into the indivisible trinity of story, place and people. A landscape will survive as long as there are people to love it. And a story is never quite over as long as there are people to tell it. And that's very, very true. And I completely agree with her that, you know, it's very important to get out into the landscape and to see these places. And maybe to use your imagination with them is something that I have done quite a, quite a lot of. The core, <coughs> this is just a section about the, the, the Boyne and Newgrange. The course of the River Boyne itself has been much altered by canalisation and by dredging. Its leafy banks, however, still repay the visitor with a sense of luxuriant, slow-moving power. Because it can sometimes be hard to connect with the ancient power of Newgrange, surrounded as we are by other people during the visit, it is worthwhile to spend time at the quieter places along the banks of the river. I concur 100% with that. To visit the ancient graveyard at Ardmulcan, for example, when evening light turns the grass to a golden green, and to watch the river as it curves past the Norman castle and Celtic crosses, is to feel something akin to the kind of power that one feels at Knockany in Limerick. In both these places, the land is rich and has been cultivated for a very long time, and the goddess that was honoured here is one associated with the fertile land and herds. 
In one story, Boyne, the goddess of the Boyne and mother of Angus, the lord of Newgrange, was drowned and became the river when she opened the well of Segish. This mythical well was the source of wisdom where the nine hazel trees grew and dropped their nuts and berries in the water, there to be swallowed by the salmon of wisdom, the salmon which gave Fionn his powers of foreseeing. Bowen flowed past Brunebonia, one of the most important access points to the other world. And it had been at the brew that she had betrayed her husband Elkmar when she lay with the Dagda. On a night which the Dagda made last for years, their mating engendered Angus. The Dinshanicus, the lore of places, calls on Bowen as one of the great ones, the rulers of the landscape. Her name associates her strongly with cows, bow being the Irish word for cow. And there are echoes of her power well into the 19th century when O'Donovan recorded that local farmers drove their cattle through the River Boyne as a charm against the powers of the she. Fabulous stuff. And that is Legendary Ireland, Myths and Legends of Ireland. Um, the author is Ethna Massey and it's published by O'Brien Press and available, I think, pretty much now in all good bookshops.